20 years ago, a teenage boy found an ancient cannon under here. He discovered it was part of a ship that had been wrecked here off the Devon coast some 400 years ago, but we still don't know the actual identity of the ship. After all those hundreds of years under the water, is there still enough of it remaining for us to be able to work out what it was and what it was doing in these waters? Can the time team finally solve the mystery of the Tynmouth wreck? Just about. I <laughs> don't want it to get much rougher. They're dead lucky. Ah. The weather we usually get on time too. Welcome aboard, Tony. Uh, this Tony. is uh, Roger and Simon. Simon. Welcome aboard, Tony. Thank Good you. to see you. And it's your side. Absolutely, yes. So, where exactly is the wreck? Well, just about where that orange survey vessel is. She's just about right over it now, actually. It's right in close, isn't it? It is. At low tide, you can stand there. Yeah. Yeah. They are undertaking a survey. Well, just like the geophysics. It's exactly the same as we normally do. Yeah, you see, they're towing the equipment along there behind it. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it's just like any time team, same procedures. Oh, exactly. Once we know where the site is, or exactly where the layout of it is, then we can decide where to put any trenches that we got to put in. Trenches underwater. Well, we got to dig, haven't we? <laughs> this big diving boat is our base for the next three days. But Mick is getting a much better view of our site through his telescope. We're searching for the remains of a shipwreck in an area of sea roughly between the big boat and the shore. Simon's found cannon and what appears to be the contents of a 16th century galley scattered across the seabed here. But he hasn't found the wooden structure of the vessel. It's probably buried under 400 years of sand, so he needs our help to uncover it. The time team has never excavated a wreck site before, so we've got an awful lot to learn about underwater archaeology over the next three days. But we've already discovered that the basic principles of land archaeology also apply at sea. We still dig trenches, and we still rely on our survey results to tell us where to dig them. So while Bernard and Cathy fix a satellite datum point over our site, on board the survey boat, Karen's is discovering how underwater geophys differs from the land version. I mean, normally when we do geophysics on dry land, they will say, well, it's not working very well today because there's the moisture content of the soils wrong. Now, obviously, right. we've got a moisture is a whole different problem out here. Yeah. Um, what techniques can you use? We primarily acoustic techniques. In fact, acoustic techniques are the only way you can get any so results from the seabed. So that's sound waves, is it? High energy, low frequency sound waves to penetrate the seabed and reflect from different textures or different layers of media. So is that a bit like an ultrasound scan yeah, you might very have much in a hospital? Right. Ultrasound oh, scan yes. are actually high frequency yes. sound, but the, uh, the effect is the same. It bounces off different layers in your body, different layers of tissue. This just bounces off different layers of rock. So this goes down from the boat, <coughs> through the water, down to the sand. Can you go through the sand? Because we've got a lot yeah. of sand on top of the wreck here. If you put enough, frequency, enough power in it, low frequency, you can go through rock. I mean, oil, it's the same techniques as oil exploration to find rock. In, uh, right. wells. So you're confident that we'll be able to find the wreck? Sure, if there's anything yeah. down there, we'll see it between the sand and the rock. As well as the acoustic survey, Geophys are also checking for iron remains with a floating magnetometer. This should pick up any cannonballs or ship's nails, hopefully still in their original timbers. If there are still bronze cannon down there, we should pick them up through the boat's metal detector. But even with all this equipment, it's going to take some time. So while they trawled the seabed, I was learning more about the site from the man who discovered it 20 years ago. Cool, that's good, isn't it? It's massive, isn't it? Cool. Yeah, it's a cooking pot. It comes from the copper. Church Rocks wreck, which we think was part of the Spanish Armada, which sailed up the Channel in 1588. Oh, right, so we're dealing with summer. the Armada. We think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What other things have you got, then, that suggest the Armada and, and the 1588? Well, we've got a fire pot. Well, what's that? 
this is this little thing here, yeah. which is 16th century hand grenade. Ah, oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. Which is very rare because as they were built for destruction, yes. <laughs> yeah. there's not many left. Yeah. What about this thing here? That, looks oh, like yeah. well, that looks, was brought looks up in. Fascinating. Yeah, that was brought up in 1992. Cool. It's a merchant seal, we think. It's um, about 13th to 15th century with the initials, and you have the cross, which was quite uniform then. Come on, I can't wait. I can't, we we no, passed the on. cannon we'll on the way in. Uh, We've got to see the cannon. <laughs> Well, there were two, there were six cannon in all brought up. Cool. There were two minion, which is this one, yeah. made by Sigismund Arbogetti in Venice, we think yeah. between about 1570 and 1600. Yeah. And there again, we've matched this with other guns yeah. from other yeah. wrecks. Presumably one of the things, Robin, that we should be doing is looking at the the background to these this weekend. I mean... Absolutely. Uh, um, I mean, I, I had a look at your booklet earlier. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, the, the one that uh, went to Pendennis Castle, um, the Seiko, was it? That's the Seiko, yeah. Uh, actually has a coat of arms on it. Yes. Right. And we've got photographs of that back in the incident room. Right. And I think that yeah. could very well provide us with the clue as to who they were produced for. That would be a useful thing for us to do, well, then, be Mike, very to, useful. To, yes, to look we'd love to. No, yeah. okay. So well, the prime that's... clues to the identity of the wreck yeah. rest in that coat of arms and that merchant seal. Right. Could our wreck really be a 16th century Mediterranean war galley sailing as part of the Spanish Armada? The museum certainly thinks so, and it's given Victor something to go on. But the cannon Simon found is Venetian and could have been cast 50 years before or 20 years after the Armada set sail. And the merchant seal certainly suggests a much earlier date. You know, I'm not sure that I'm that happy about the, the certainty of the Armada connection. Yeah, I mean, the, the thought occurred to me that if it was, if it was a, an Armada ship, it would probably be known about. Mm. After all, all the others that went down around um, Scotland and Ireland were, yes. were known and people went to look for them. Yeah. I can't believe it wouldn't have got into the local folklore. And, I mean, it, it could have been a trading vessel yeah. that might have been around at the time of the Armada or a good deal afterwards. Yeah. And after all, the Venetians were, were, the, were the great um, traders and commercial people anyway. Yeah, and we know that at uh, Tynmouth they've been bringing wine in uh, from all, all ports around France. Yeah. The, the, uh, cargo from the Mediterranean wouldn't be that necessarily no, that unusual. No. No, We've got to follow up on that crest, though, on the, 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 sh the coat of arms, because that, that's the photo um, of the, the cannon that's now at Pendennis Castle. And you're thinking that if this gives us a particular family, well, that might help. It should it should do yeah. because all the cannon that have come up seem to be of a period. In other words, uh, this is not a one-off that's been captured from another ship and installed yeah. on on this particular yeah. one or, or whatever. Uh, what about that um, that other seal thing? I mean, is that well? To be honest, I have to say I don't know what our chances are of identifying a merchant from his initials of that kind of period. I mean, we can try, but uh, quite often there can be a number of possibilities. But we'll see what we can do.